Good morning and a very warm welcome to Liverpool and to the ACC. My name is Carsten. I'm the head of the physics department here and I'm delighted to have all of you here today to join us on a journey through science and technology um, and a journey into both the past and the future. So I'll just give a very brief overview of what's going to happen today and then I think we have an exciting lineup of speakers uh, for you today which are all available throughout the day. We've got a mix of hands-on activities for you to explore the world of uh, the next generation of particle accelerators and the science that's done with it. And I'm sure you will all have very exciting discussions um, and, and impressions during the day. So I'll, I'll start by taking you on a journey, a journey in the past, um, actually quite long in the past, 13.8 uh, billion years ago, um, to the Big Bang itself. Physics is all about answering the big questions um, that are related to the universe, the, the world around us. And one of the central questions is why is everything the way it is? Why were not equal amounts of matter and antimatter created in the Big Bang itself? And why are we here? Why does our universe exist? Fundamentally, we do not know. Now, the problem is if you want to understand the very large questions, like questions related to the beginning of time and uh, questions of cosmic dimensions, we have to look into the very small. So we have to see what is the world made of, what are the building bricks, what are the different particles that make up everything, and we have to see that we understand the fundamental forces that govern nature. The question then is, how do we study these? So what kind of experiments do we do? What kind of infrastructures do we need in order to find out more about the world, about nature, and about these forces? And one of the ways of doing this is to use particle accelerators. Um, how many of you guys have heard about accelerators before coming here? So that's a very good basis, and I, uh, it's a good sign that the scientists that are here today have heard about them. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> So, so one, of the, one of the infrastructures um, that is doing science with um, particle accelerators is CERN in Geneva, uh, Switzerland. It's the largest accelerator lab in the world, and you can see it here. So this is Lake Geneva, that's Geneva Airport. And this monster accelerator here is a 27-kilometer ring buried 100 meter underneath the ground. And what's happening here is that um, scientists, they accelerate charged particles to extremely high energies, and they collide them in uh, detectors, ginormous underground constructions which are there to analyze, to analyze the collisions that take place and to understand the physics that's happening in these machines. In the LHC, there's four different ones of them, four different large experiments. CMS and ATLAS are the largest, and then there's the ALICE um, detector and LHCB. And that's where scientists try to understand the physics um, with the help of these particle colliders. That's an example of one of these um, detectors. It's the Atlas detector. Um, it's housed in a cavern the same size as Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, underneath the ground. It's a very, very large um, um, infrastructure. You can see the standard international scientists here for comparison. So it's, it's really um, a gigantic um, um, detector just there to understand the physics in these collisions much, much better. Now you could say, is, is accelerator science only about fundamental research? Is it only to further knowledge? Uh, there's actually lots of applications um, on, on, uh, that we are using and benefiting from every day. All the silicon technology that we are using today would simply be impossible without particle accelerators in the first place. So imagine your life without mobile phones and computers these days, unthinkable, I guess. There's also other applications, um, in particular medical accelerations, uh, me medical applications which now become extremely relevant for the UK. This is one example here of a modern treatment facility using proton beams for cancer treatment. Protons are sort of a, a magic bullet. Uh, they can enter into the body of a patient and basically destroy the cancer cells without affecting any of the surrounding healthy tissue. It's a, it's a game-changing um, treatment technology that comes to the UK this year with several facilities being opened. One in Manchester at the Christie and one is going to be opened here in Liverpool just next year. So it's really something which is happening right here and right now. Now, um, the interesting thing about accelerator science and having this symposium, this event here in, in Liverpool, is that this is basically where it all started, just down the road. If we go back 100 years, the first accelerator that was um, established um, and built for science was the one that these three gentlemen put together. That's um, um, Cockcroft and Walton. 
and Ernest Rutherford in the center, who had the idea of using particle accelerators to understand uh, nature much, be much better. And he had a very clear vision of what he needed um, in order to study these. So the first particle accelerator in the world for science uh, was constructed here in the northwest of England. Um, and here we are um, slightly less than 100 years later. And now we are looking again at what is the next generation, what is the next step of particle accelerators. Now we've, we've, um, we've carried on using Cockroft's names and there's actually an institute um, also just down the road here uh, at Darsbury Lab, which is a collaboration between the University of Liverpool, Manchester, Lancaster and Strathclyde in Scotland, as well as STFC, um, who is uh, basically hosting us on the campus of Darsbury Lab. And at this institute, we are all working together with just one single purpose of um, further developing particle accelerators. Now the question then is, um, what could be that next step in terms of accelerator science? What's the next uh, big leap in terms of the technologies? And that's why we're here today. We want to have a look at, uh, basically, a look into the crystal ball and see where might we be 10 years from now. And I think that's particularly important for you um, this morning, because 10 years from now, this can be, this will be your careers after you've studied science. So here we go, this quick snapshot into the future. <laughs> It's the Eupraxia project that has brought us all here together, um, the scientists and, and, and you as the next generation, because we want to have a look at how does this technology look like. And what we require in order to make um, particle accelerators more efficient, to make them more compact, is we require much higher electric field gradients, much higher than what, what you can produce in conventional radio frequency cavities. So one of the technologies is what you find in the sun. It's using a plasma in which you can maintain um, extremely high gradients, a thousand, ten thousand times higher than what you could do with electric fields normally. So ten thousand times higher electric fields means that you can shrink your particle accelerator by the same factor. So what I've shown before, a machine like the LHC at CERN, 27 kilometers, that could shrink to something like just 27 meters. So an absolute game-changing technology. In order to do this, um, what we are thinking of is, is using bursts of light, that's this white a button here to create a wave inside a plasma um, and that wave um, can then create extremely high field gradients and today you will learn much more about this technology. We have experts invited that will tell you exactly how this is done, where we stand with laser technologies and where we stand also with these facilities. Now you can do such big um, experiments not alone, so you need um, a strong partnership and Eupraxia is a European Union funded design study. It's many different institutions across Europe and actually also outside of Europe that all work together with the same goal, namely to develop a conceptual design report of such a next generation facility that you guys might be using 10 years from now. So that's what it's all about. Uh, so it's very much a look forward into the future and today gives you the opportunity to dive into this, to learn from the talks, to get engaged in the hands-on activities and speak with the scientists. In terms of um, the running of the day, just some, some housekeeping issues. Um, so we would like to involve you as much as possible. So if you are on social media, if you use Snapchat or Instagram or Twitter, please use those extensively during the day with the hashtag Eupraxia. There will be a prize for the best tweet. So we are going to look out for your social media contributions. Take photographs of you and your colleagues in action. Share them with us. We really want to see how you enjoy the day. There's also going to be a quiz and a questionnaire which you have received, or if you don't have it yet, you can get it from the reception desk. And there's, again, there's a prize um, um, coming from that, um, which we will award at quarter past two here in the same place. So I think that's everything from the, for the housekeeping issue. I'm really happy to see all of you here today.
and I hand over to Maxine, who is going to introduce the first speaker. Thank you.